One of the most common questions I get on this channel is usually around how do I become a data engineer or how do I get into the data engineering space? And I know there's a lot of videos that cover this topic, but I wanted to give my take on this and kind of share some personal experience that might be a little bit different than what you would hear on some of the other ones. And hopefully it will help you on your journey to getting into this whole world and take some practical steps to make it happen. So number one, the first piece of advice I always give people is to first see if you can move internally within your company, because it's very difficult to go from no experience to data engineering. Yes, you could do a boot camp and say, I've taken this course, I've learned this information and get a job that's possible, but you can't really replicate experience. A lot of times as employees, you don't realize the actual leverage that you have. Companies don't want to lose you. It's expensive to hire people. And if they have good talent in their company that maybe wants to do something else or wants to shift what they're doing, they want to make you happy so that you don't leave. Realistically, you may not be able to go from, let's say, operations to data engineering directly. But what you could do is say, I want to get into IT, so I will go from my business operations and maybe I'll become a business analyst. Me personally, I didn't have a computer science degree. I started in business and I was doing business operations, but I knew I wanted to get into tech and eventually that led me to data engineering, but it was a multi-year process. But I was able to get into the door of IT with no experience because I knew the business and I knew the products and the processes that we had. So I used that to become first a QA tester and then a business analyst and then a BI developer and then a data engineer. And then so by the end of that, I'm a data engineer, I have real world experience, and all of that happened within two to three years. And the other thing about that is because you're still working there, you're still getting paid, but you're learning new skills and you're still on that path to becoming, let's say a data engineer. And it's still beneficial for the company because they don't wanna lose you. So if you're a good employee, you have good relationships and there's an opportunity for you to move internally, absolutely do that. It's exactly what I did. And by the end of it, you're no longer an outsider looking into the data world. And then at that point, it's just figuring out where you wanna go next. The next piece of advice is a little more tactical and it has to do with resumes. If you're giving your resume to apply for maybe as a data engineering role or really any technical role, put your skills, so the actual tools that you know, right at the very top. A lot of times I'll see people send their resumes and they'll have, you know, like a summary of themselves or their education, their GPA and stuff like that at the top. And while that stuff is nice to see in some regards, the reality is for a technical position, people don't care as much about that. Ultimately, when people are looking at your resume, they want to know, can this person do the job that we're looking for? Where you went to school and all this stuff isn't as important. And what I would recommend also is tailoring those skills to what whatever you're applying for. So if you're applying to a position that is a Microsoft stack, if you have some experience in certain Microsoft database tools or, or related things, put those first. At the same time, you don't wanna exaggerate this. Don't lie about it, it'll come out later. And don't put a million different things. Be very specific about the skills and the tools that you know that you can speak on that are related. So really the order would be skills, maybe then you put your experience. So if you don't have a lot of experience in that, maybe put a project or two that you've worked on that's related, schooling and community stuff at the bottom. Again, just because that first two to three seconds that somebody's looking at your resume is so critical and you don't want them to use that time reading something that's not relevant to the position. Third piece of advice is to create a fun project on the side that incorporates all of the different tools and skills that you're trying to get into. So again, a personal example for me, as I was trying to learn these things, I created a website that uh, aggregated information from various sports leagues across the city and hosted them in one place. But by doing that, it forced me to learn different things. I was able to learn how to scrape websites. I learned how to clean up data with SQL, put them in databases and tables and all the pipelines. And you can do whatever you wanted. That's just my example. But having that project when you go into an interview or having it on your resume is a big differentiator. It's something that's actually interesting. On every interview I had, I either brought it up or people asked me about it. You're kind of making your own experience as opposed to maybe you don't have it directly uh, in your work. One thing I'll say about this also is don't just take a boot camp or follow an online course and then present that project and say, hey, I did this project. And while you should be proud of you know completing that, in terms of making that your only experience of a project, I, th I don't think is sufficient 
because one, people can tell. And not only that, when you get into a more technical interview and people start pressing you about it and how you did it, you'll be able to speak more confidently to it if you yourself came up with the ideas and built it yourself. And second, like I said, it's just more unique. It makes you more of an interesting person because it shows that not only are you one, you're capable because you've built this project and your, your, your knowledge is at a certain level, but two, that you have initiative and that you're a creative person, you're a creative thinker, a problem solver, and that's things that people want. And even if you're not the top tier skill-wise, people will want to work with people like that because they can elevate your skills and you can learn and they can teach you what you need to do to be successful, but you have that intangible of you know showing your initiative that way. And the final suggestion would be to see if you can attend some networking events, whether they're virtual or in person, because really what you need is to break through this wall of being maybe you don't have a lot of experience or whatever and getting that interaction on a personal level is something that can really help you out and separate you because again if there's you know 100 resumes for something they may give you a second look just because of that and, and then give you a shot you need someone to take a chance on you and that's one way that you can kind of stand out i know there's meetup.com is a great one there's data engineering communities that do this so look around, see if you can find some that are virtual or in your city and try to meet some people and ask them questions. What would they do? What are they looking for? And again, that's an opportunity for you to possibly break through that wall and get into the space. And the last thing I'll say is just the fact that you're watching this video or any of the other videos on my channel that are tutorials or anybody else's channel means that you're already on that path. You're already doing that. So stay with that. You should be proud of yourself for just being in that position because that means you're taking the effort to consume this kind of content. Uh, so stay with it. Let me know in the comments what your experience has been and thank you for watching.